This is ReactCast's episode 10, Redux Thunk Tricks. Redux Thunk is the most used library for side effects and asynchronous calls in Redux. And that's for a reason. Thunks are easy to get started, flexible and powerful. But despite being so used, there are a few Thunk tricks that aren't yet commonplace. So in this episode, I will share some pieces of Thunk knowledge that might help you build better applications in the future. I'm assuming here that you already have familiarity with Redux Thunk. If you need to learn the basics before, take a look at the show notes for some helpful links. Let me begin by showing you the sample application I'll be using. It's a very simplistic app. I can select a book from the list, and it shows the book details. Just that. The first thing I want you to do here is fetch a list of similar books based on the currently selected book tags. I already have both Thunk Action Creators. Here is Request Book and Request Books by Tags. Notice that Request Books by Tags expects an array of tags, but I won't have these tags for any given book beforehand. This means that this action must absolutely be dispatched after I fetch some selected book. Let me show you the book container component here. It uses React Redux Connect to inject props. Here I'm importing both request book and request book by tags. It also has a map dispatch to props function. But notice here on component did mount that right now I'm only dispatching request book. I'm not yet using request books by tags. The reason is that request books by tags again must absolutely be dispatched only after I have the selected book. And making these requests in order in my components, it's, it's kind of tricky. I could, for example, use component will receive props, checking whether the product data has arrived before dispatching request books by tags. But yeah, it's, it's very contrived. I would need to be extra careful not to accidentally dispatch whenever any other props changes, for example. I have a better solution for this. And here goes the first tip. You can return from thunk functions. Here, in my action creator, whatever I return will be the return value of the dispatch itself. If I return a string, for example, my component will have access to the string. In this specific case, I have a promise from the API, so I can simply return it. This means that back on my component, I can do request book, then request books by tags of the ID and books tags. Much more readable, isn't it? And it works. See? I can take this one step further and decouple my component from having to know that these actions run in sequence. To do that, I'll create a new Thunk Action Creator that takes care of these asynchronous orchestration. I'll call it Request Book and Similars. It is an action creator by itself, and all it does is dispatch request book, then request books by tags, in order. Back on my component, let me import request book and similars. Now my component doesn't need to be aware of how the actions work. It just dispatches one action and expects some props from the Redux store. And again, it still works. One piece of advice here. To load both books and similar books, I'm dispatching four actions. Book requesting, book success, similar requesting, and similar success. Each dispatch can potentially trigger a re-render, so if these actions are always dispatched together, we might as well turn them into a single action creator. Here, I'm just assuming that I might need to call them separately. Good, let's move on and talk about a new subject, get state. Thunk action creators receive not only dispatch, but also a get state method as a second argument. Get state can be used to access the state in the store. But this is not a tip, this is actually a trap, because you should actually avoid using get state in your thunks. Let me show you why. I have another action creators file here with an add to cart action creator. It's currently empty, but before implementing any actual code, let me wire up the rest of the application. I already have a cart reducer. In my component, I'll import the add to cart action creator and pass it to map dispatch to props. 
I'm also going to paste JSX for an add to cart button. Import the button component. And create the handler function. OK. Back to the action creator itself, I need to call the API with the selected book ID. The temptation here is to simply use getState to get the currently selected book's ID, like this. And while this would work, it presents some problems. See, in programming, explicit is usually better than implicit. I do have access to the book ID in my component, I can simply pass it to the action creator. Getting it directly from the store obscures my action creator and ends up introducing a new opportunity for failure. Let me do it. I'll simply pass this.props.id, which is the book's ID, to the action creator. This is not to say that get state in thunks are useless. There are some cases where it is perfectly acceptable. Caching is one example. Checking if you already have data in the store before doing an external fetch. Another one would be conditional dispatch, dispatching only if some criteria is matched. In this app, I can check whether the user is logged before dispatching add to cart. Const user equals getState.user. If there's an user, dispatch added with the book ID. Let me test. And if the user is not logged, I cannot add to cart. Of course, it would also be a good idea to redirect the user to a login page or, or show a message, but you get the overall idea here. All right, dispatch, get state. Did you know that I can inject a custom third argument in thanks? How? And most importantly, why? Well, in this example project, action creators, I'm importing an API module and calling it in my thanks. While this works great, it makes testing these things more difficult as I have to mock these external dependencies. Additionally, there are some other occasions where relying on important modules can be bad. In universal apps, for example, when rendering your app in the server, API client code often gets initialized per request. In our case here, each request would end up getting its own separate instance of API. For all those reasons, Redux Thunk provides a with extra argument initialization method that lets you inject any Thunk dependencies as a third argument. Let me change this code to have the API injected in the Thunk functions. In my store, I will import the API. Let me change the path here and change apply middleware Thunk to Thunk with extra argument and I'll pass the API. Now, on my action creators, I can remove the API import and receive it as the third argument, dispatch get state API. Let me also update the book action creators here and here and the user here. And if I test, things still work, but now in a decoupled, more testable way. And that was it for this episode. The first tip was very simple. You can return values from thunks, and this can be useful, for example, for asynchronous orchestration. The second tip was about using thunks get state with care, preferring explicitly data passing. Finally, the third tip is about using thunk with extra arguments to make your thunks easy to test and easy to run on multiple environments. If you do have other tricks, please share them on the GitHub repository. It's github.com slash castiozen slash reactcasts. You can also check the source code for all episodes, suggest new topics, and participate in the discussion. You just watched an episode of React Casts. Please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell icon to be notified when the next episodes are out. Also, big thanks to Fullstack Academy for the support. Fullstack Academy is the top coding bootcamp focused on JavaScript with classes in New York, Chicago, as well as a remote program. Check them out at fullstackacademy.com. See you in the next episodes.